Welcome to the captivating world of b Specting Explosives at Explosives Detection B-School. In this fascinating journey, we will reveal the remarkable process of transforming ordinary honeybees into experts in explosive detection. From the moment these bees leave their hives, we will take you through every step, collecting, identifying, training, and their transition from mere pollen collectors to skilled explosives detection experts. You'll witness how specially designed equipment is used to collect and store the bees safely before their training begins. To ensure they're ready, these bees are gently cooled to reduce their movement and then placed in harnesses, allowing them to adapt to their new environment for 30 minutes. Stay with us as we uncover the incredible training techniques that make all of this possible. However, manually loading each bee into the harness is a tedious task for technicians. For this reason, laboratories like the Visual Communication Unit in Lausanne Research have developed an automatic bee loader. The bees are caged so they have to enter one cylinder at a time. Each cylinder is then placed into a loading tube, where each bee is slowly and safely placed into the harness and positioned. Bees typically remain in the harness for a few days before being released back into the hive. But how do you train bees? Bees are very good at detecting chemicals, this is how they find their favorite flowers. The simple steps required to condition dogs also apply to bees. They presented the animals with neutral stimuli, such as bells, which initially made no sense. But if you follow the bell with a biologically meaningful reward, such as food, animals quickly learn that the sound of the bell means food is coming. From then on, every time the dog heard the bell, it started salivating in anticipation of food. If you replace the bell with the smell of anesthetic, the dog will drool every time it smells this particular anesthetic. This is the basic principle of training detection dogs. Bees may not drool like dogs, but they have tongues and proboscises designed specifically for eating. Additionally, bees' antennae are vapor sensors with sensitivity thresholds of one part per trillion, similar to a dog's sense of smell. Since bees are collected randomly, there is an important qualification test that bees have to pass before they can be trained, and that's the ability to extend their proboscis when the end of a cotton swab is dipped in sugar water. This is called the proboscis extension reflex, or PR. Bees with successful PER will advance to the training rounds. When bees are exposed to explosive vapors for 6 seconds, they receive a sugar water reward in the last 3 seconds. The training phase can also be automated, and subsequently released to steam with a raised feeding device in front of the bees, so they associate the two. After 4 rounds of training, bees respond voluntarily when exposed to PR explosive odor and are ready for fieldwork. But aside from visually observing bees, how can you closely monitor their responses? There are two ways to do this, first, with the help of a camera. The bees are placed on a platform loaded with monitoring equipment. A camera in the device records the bees up close. With the help of some computer vision algorithms, the camera output can be done interpretation to know when bees PR. Everyone unanimously sends out the PR signal showing that they have a high probability of detecting the specific types of explosives they were trained to detect. A second monitoring method also involves encasing bees in tubes. Enter the machine, but instead of a camera in front of each bee, there is an infrared LED. Infrared light hits the bees and reflects to the light sensor. Based on the amount of light detected by the sensor, it can be determined whether the bee has extended its proboscis. Now for the actual test. Load 6 cartridges into the portable detection unit. Each cartridge contains 6 bees. Notice the infrared light in front of each bee. The monitoring screen displayed 36 green squares, each representing a bee that had not yet responded. To test an air sample, place a portable detector near the target and use at the push of a button, all 36 bees are exposed to the air in the bag for 6 seconds. When the bee reaches out of the tree trunk, the corresponding square changes from green to red. The cool thing is that bees can be trained to different substances in each cartridge. This allows the device to detect not only the presence of a substance but also its type. After a few days, the bees are returned to the hive. 
It takes months to train a sniffer dog, but only a few hours to train a bee. But more importantly, bees may be better suited for certain applications just like dogs, for example when detecting landmines. It's not impossible that a dog's weight could detonate a landmine. African giant rats are often used to detect landmines because they are very effective and only weigh a few kilograms. Researchers say bees can be trained to detect landmines. I quickly realized that you could walk through a minefield with a portable detector and see where a bee sticks its proboscis out is not the best idea. Instead, they released the bees and used drones to monitor them. Trained bees tend to gather around buried mines in the hope of finding food. Analyzing images captured by drones can provide insight into where mines may be hiding. But not all animals are trained to help detect explosives. Some have been trained for deployment. Many people know about the anti-tank dogs trained by the Soviets there, bombs dropped on German tanks in the 1940s. But have you heard of bomb-guided pigeons? Like dogs and bees, pigeons can adapt to respond to specific things. Stimulate. Assume that pecking in a ping-pong ball means that the small feeder is open so that the pigeons can eat. But how do you go from a ping-pong pigeon to a guided bomb? Turns out, it's a simple three-step process. It starts with a simple circular motion. The pigeons quickly learn that pecking at the circle means a food reward. After some time, the circles were replaced by movable metal windows. The pigeons also received a metal beak attached to a wire. This helps determine the exact point of contact on the removable metal window. The pigeon was rewarded after continuing to peck at the center of the window. Finally, the bird saw an image of a battleship. The pecking locations in the images were used as input to the glide bomb's guidance system to determine the pigeon's position. Whenever the bomb starts to drift away from its target, the image of the target moves off center edge of the screen, but a well-trained pigeon will continue to peck at the center of the target, activating the bomb again. American psychologist and behavioral scientist B.F. Skinner, the man behind the project, eventually lost funding because no one took his project seriously. The idea of letting birds control bombs is also not very practical. However, the use of birds as weapons is not limited to the military. Dutch police train eagles to intercept unidentified drones. From a young age, chicks are taught to view drones as prey. As they grow, the eagles use their hunting instincts to intercept the drones and carry them away, get to a safe place and expect to be rewarded with food. Although Dutch police report that the hawks have a 95% success rate, animal rights activists were not happy with this and halted the plan. This happens even though Teflon gloves are designed for use with eagle claws to prevent damage from the rapid rotation of the drone's propeller, which is extremely dangerous. In fact, the armed forces of many countries use animals to perform certain tasks. At some Lithuanian Air Force bases, falcons are used to scare away birds. Foreign object damage poses a real threat to aircraft. Dolphins and sea lions train to detect and mark mines. Protect navies around the world. They can even attach hooks to underwater objects and help retrieve them. These include a late 19th century steam-powered torpedo that was discovered by a dolphin and is now housed in a museum. In some cases, technological alternatives may be available. We can use drones instead of eagles to take down other drones, either through physical contact or use a net to offset the propeller. Animals may be at risk during military operations, and their handling and care can be challenging in a combat environment. Therefore, the decision to use animals in the military is complex and should consider potential benefits and ethical issues. Did you like this video? Then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Let us know below, what do you think about using animals in military operations?